The let function in Excel allows you to store a calculation in a variable and then you can recall that calculation over and over again by calling that variable. This not only makes your calculation smaller but also very easy to debug your calculation. In this video, I've got some very interesting examples of the let function in Excel. You're going to enjoy this a lot. Let's get started. All right, let's just first understand the syntax of the let function, then take a look at a few examples. So when we just write the let function in Excel, it starts with obviously the let function. The first part of the let function starts with a name. That means what would you like to call your variable? Now here, the name does not require a quotation mark. You can just write any name. So let's just say that my thing, my name is one. And then in the variable one, I am just declaring the value one. And then after that, it asks you, hey, do you have any more variables to declare? Sure enough, I have another thing to declare, which is hey, I could just say that my second variable is two and that's where I will declare two. Now you can declare this pair of variable and the value, the value could be a single number, it could be a text, it could be an entire calculation or a range of data, it could be anything. This pair of the variable and the calculation could be declared as many number of times. This is declaration once and then we have declaration number two, so on and so forth. Once you're done declaring all the values and the variables of those values in that order, then you go ahead and declare that do you want to do anything with the calculation. Now, when you are deciding that what do I want to do with the two variables that I have declared, one or two, you can choose to use any of them, all of them, or none of them. So let's just say that, for instance, I want to add the numbers one and two. So I can just say, hey, the one that I wrote, and then I can say, hey, the two that I wrote, I want to add these two, plus enter, and this gives me the answer three. Now imagine a scenario where you declared something, let's say one, and there was a calculation here, or a range here, or a set of data here, and you had to repeat that or use that over and over and over again in your entire calculation, you could just declare one again and one again and one again as many number of times and this is eventually going to shorten your calculation. And that is the basic syntax of the let function. Let's just take a look at a few very interesting examples of the let functions in practical use cases and where could you use them. Alright, here is my very simple first example that you might witnessed in real life as well. So take a look, two simple columns of the data, student and the marks. And I've got a few students here for which I have to extract the marks, which is a simple X lookup. So I have to look up for this particular student in this range and then return this particular value. Additionally, after the value is returned, I then want to perform a check that if the marks are less than 50, student is failed. If the marks are between 50 to 70, the student is average and above 70, the student is good or the marks are good. So how do we do all of that? That obviously is an X lookup function along with an if, but we have to do it again and again. So that is going to make the formula longer. Let's just write the long formula and then I will demonstrate to you how can we make it shorter and smarter using let. So I'm going to go and say, hey, I want to do an X lookup, X lookup of this particular value in this particular range, go find the value and I'm going to lock that. If you find it, please return this particular range. I'm going to close the bracket and press enter. And here I get the values. Now, based on the values extracted, I then have to write an if condition. So let me just go ahead and quickly copy this particular formula that I have and then I can just paste it over and over again. So I'm going to say, hey, if this particular formula is less than 50, then I want to write bad or I want to write fail. Now, once I've written my first condition, I then want to test out my second condition for which I'm just going to write another if. So I'm going to say if the formula, which is the XLOOKUP formula, gives me the answer, which is less than equal to 70, then I'm just going to say that this student is average. And then finally, I want to say if none of these conditions are matching, then I'm going to say the student is actually Good. That means the marks are actually above 70. I'm going to close the bracket. I'm going to close the bracket of the if and this is going to return me average, good and fail. That's what I get. Now, you can see that in this particular formula, the need of the X lookup finding the value and then me comparing the value against a benchmark is done over and over again, at least twice here. So X lookup is here and the same X lookup is here. What if we were to store this X lookup in the let function, it would actually make the formula smaller and smarter. Let's just start writing the let function. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write the let function function here. In the let function, let's just call something like a variable. Like I said, the first part is a variable. I'm going to say m for marks and then I'm going to go ahead and write my xlookup function. Now, whatever is the value of the xlookup is going to be stored in this particular variable called m and then I can call m over and over and over again in my formula. So I'm just going to go ahead and at the moment, I'm just going to return the very value of m. Let's just see if I do get the same output or not. I'm going to close the bracket, press enter and I do get all the marks right here. Nice. Now I'm going to start to write my if condition. So I'm going to go ahead and say that, hey, I don't really want to return the vanilla M. I also want to return the marks. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, I am going to check if the M, the marks, are less than 50. In that case, I want you to write, let's say, fail. Then I'm going to say, hey, if the M is less than equal to 70, then 
I want to write average. Otherwise, I want to write actually good. The brackets are closed. This looks good. I'm going to press enter. Actually, I had to write an if condition here. So if marks are less than 70, then average otherwise good. This is good. I'm going to close the bracket and I'm going to press enter and this works just all right. Now, if you take a look at the formula, now in case I want to change the logic of the M or I want to do anything with the lookup, the only place that I will make a change is here and that is stored in the M and the M will obviously take effect here and here and everywhere else in the formula. This actually makes the formula shorter. Now, let's just say for instance, I not only want to get the remark or the pass or fail tag, but I also actually want to get the marks along with the average good and fail. How can we do that? Now, this would have been an additional V lookup or an X lookup to get the marks and concatenate it with the grade. So what do we do? I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, if the marks are less than 50, then I not only want to write the tag word fail, but I also want to concatenate with the letter or the M, which is the marks itself. I'm just going to press enter. And if I drag this down, I'm going to get 49 here, which is nice. Now, since we have not included that in the other if statements, I'm also going to do that. So I'm going to say, hey, if the marks are average, then I want to have a dash and the marks are good, then I want to have a dash. And then alongside, I also want to include the letter M. M is nothing but marks. Press enter. And this gives me the marks along with the tag. Now, this would have been a really long formula, repeating X lookup over and over and over again in the formula. And through this, our formula is much shorter. Let's just take a look at another very interesting example and probably something that you wouldn't have thought of. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially tax, modeling, and the M language. I teach them in a very, very structured way. You'll not only learn how to obviously frame the solutions to the problems that I'm discussing in the course, but more importantly, I pay a lot of attention on explaining the logic as to why a thing is working and why is it not working and how do you actually debug your own problems. This is going to boost your confidence tremendously while you're trying to build your own solutions and you'll be able to confidently build your solutions. In the last few weeks, I have completely revamped my DAX course and started from scratch, teaching you the fundamentals, adding in a lot of content depth to the course. The new one is out now. I'll leave a link for you to join the course and you'll find it tremendously beneficial. Let's just go back to the video. All right, here is another very interesting example of storing the functions and not the value of the functions. You will understand once I take a look at this example. So I've got uh, students and the marks here, but actually that is bucketed into two different ranges. So that's bucket number one. It's kept like this. And this is bucket number two. Obviously, we can V stack it and we can combine the two ranges together. But let's just say that we have the setup at the moment like this. And I want to do an X lookup. Some of the students I'm actually going to find in this particular range. And some of the students I'm actually going to find in this particular range. So how do we find the marks? Now, generally speaking, I want to write a single X lookup function. So I'm going to say equals to X lookup. I want to find the value of A. I want to find it in this particular range. I'm going to lock that. And if you do find it, please give me this particular value. I'm going to close the bracket, press enter, and I drag the formula down. The only problem is just in case if the value is not found, it's going to give me an any error for which I can actually go ahead and start to write an if any function. So if this formula actually returns me an error in this scenario, I can write in another X lookup function to go find it in another range. So I'm just going to say if any, if any, this particular formula returns you an any error in that scenario, I'm going to say X lookup this particular range and this particular is the range of the data. This is the result of that I would want. Close the bracket and press enter. And sure enough, this formula actually works. If I drag the formula down, it actually gets the NA error once it's looking in this range. And that NA error triggers the if NA function. If NA, then it does V lookup or X lookup right here. Now, obviously, this has to be done twice because the lookup ranges are different. That means this lookup range and this lookup range is different. So you have to do X lookup twice. Not a problem. But you know what? You can also store the function itself, making the formula smaller. If you have a a long lambda function or a function that you're using over and over and over again in your formula, you can actually store the function itself in the let variable. Let me help you understand. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write the let statement. So I'm going to at the start, I'll say the let statement. In the let statement, I will say XLP for X lookup. You can even give it a shorter name. Now, once I give the XLP, I am going to declare the X lookup function in the name of the variable, which is XLP, but I will not write anything inside of that X lookup. So I will say X lookup and I will not even put the comma. I will just write the name of the function. So here is the variable in the variable. I store the function itself and that's literally it. Now, once I have stored the function, now the function X lookup in this formula can be named as XLP and I can use that over and over and over again. Now, this obviously is going to make my formula shorter, not any faster, but shorter in case you have needs where you have the formula being repeated over and over again. It's a gigantic formula. You can actually store the formula names in 
in variables and make the formula actually smaller. All right, so I'm just going to say equals to XLP and I'm just going to go ahead and just write equals to XLP right here as well. XLP and that is nothing but my XLOOKUP function. Press enter. It doesn't change the output. It gives you the same output. Uh, there's a multiplication sign here, which I have to remove. And there's a multiplication sign here, which I have to remove. And that actually works just all right. So I press enter. Nothing changes. The output is the very same. But now that we have stored the XLOOKUP here, I can use this as a function and write my input. Did you know that the let function in Excel works exactly like the let and the in keywords in Power Query? I've done a basic video on helping you understand the M language that includes the let and the in keywords. And that is the video that you should watch next in case you're familiar with Power Query and you want to upgrade yourself to the M language. You must take a look at that video and I will see you in that one. Cheers. Bye.